Good evening everybody, welcome back to the channel, it's me, Luke, also known as the Yachtman React, and it's time for a requested video reaction. Now this has been requested by David, who's in my uh, sixth highest tier, the $6.19 a month tier, that's right, yep, and he's requested that I check out something called Help Yourself. He sent me a, a link to a playlist, and this was the first video in the playlist, you know, it was yeah, like episode one in a playlist, so yeah, this is the first one. So, uh, yeah, I guess th th this is what you wanted me to check out. I have no idea what to expect, no idea what it is. Uh, Angus Deaton, I don't know if I've heard of him or not, I don't think I have. I've no idea when this is from. Uh, all I know is it's what he wants me to check out. He said it's funny. And what else did he say? No, that's not it. Self-help videos. Yeah, that's what he said. Self-help videos. Okay, so, right, yeah. Real self-help videos? Anyway, I guess we'll see when we get into it. So, uh, of course, I'll uh, put this on, this will be alright to go on YouTube because some Random with 130 subscribers put it on, so I guess I'll be okay. I put it on too. So please subscribe to the channel, and uh, you know, feel free to come and join us on the Patreon. So if you've got anything you want to see me react to, if you're a patron of mine and you request something, it gets done. That's uh, one of the main benefits of being a patron of mine. If you're just a YouTube subscriber and you make a request, I uh, at the moment can't really do it. But you can also make single paid requests, and I've lowered the price. Um, from two pounds to one pound, and it's now it's now just one pound to request a single standalone reaction. It can be anything. It can be a music video. It can be a, a comedy routine, a stand-up comedy routine, a clip from I don't know, eight out of ten cats does countdown or whatever you're into. That's yeah. So uh, feel free to do that. You send the one pound donation to uh, preferably my PayPal, but you can send it to my Buy Me a Coffee page, to which there is a link in the description of I think every video. I think there's a link on the channel header, although I'm not entirely sure. Let me just check for you guys to make sure. If you uh, let, if you've got children no, there that are under the age of seventeen, use Shut social up. media. No, there isn't. But it's in the description of pretty much every video, so you can find it there. Anyway, let's get into this. No idea what to expect, but you know me, guys. Always happy to check out something new. Through hypnosis! Old, but Good that evening, might be the Welcome quality. to Help Yourself, your weekly guide to the world of self-help videos. Videos that equip you with skills you'll never need, presented by people you'll hopefully never meet. <laughs> I should point out that all these videos are genuine, many in the same condition as when they were manufactured, i.e. unwatched. Uh -huh. Sadly, our quality threshold, rock bottom as it is... As so they're real videos made by people... Right, OK. I'm glad to know that. I thought that they might have been, you know intentionally produced for this show which would have been fine as well you know because you could have some fun with it but knowing that they're actually real even better has nevertheless ruled out certain contenders for tonight's show such as the enticing how to live forever <laughs> guaranteed to work or your money back <laughs> and the widely acclaimed how to be a drag queen <laughs> uh, with a forward by camilla parker bowles <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you could not air the show today with that joke included. <laughs> also missing out, the somewhat precarious do-it-yourself gunpowder cookbook. What could go <laughs> wrong? It tells you how to blow yourself up, so the ideal <laughs> gift for Anthony Worrell-Thompson. <laughs> this week we're looking at specialist skills. 
Explain that one to me, guys. The type of skills that not many of us could or would ever want to master. Skills that answer the question, are you a man or are you a mass murderer? Uh, speaking of which... Well, well self-defense. Surviving a street fight. Yes, stand by for a video guide that's essential viewing before a night out in Croydon. <laughs> My first <laughs> thing that I want to tell you... Oh, Keith, what? ...is to keep your eyes on your opponent. Always, never look away from your opponent. Because if you look away, you cannot see the glass coming. Or very true, very true, bald American Miyagi. Eh, look. Oh. <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> no, let me try again. Eh, look I. Always look I. Back tomorrow. <laughs> or the hit, or the baseball bat, or what about a shin kick in the head? If you didn't see me holding this knife, you could have been dead, my friend. Because I can play the innocent person and I can say, Look, sir, I really don't want anything of this. And I go, Whoop! like this, and I slit your throat, and it's over and out. Nice guy. <laughs> sort of person you would invite to your home for Christmas, if he told you to. Um, yeah, if you're having Christmas in Nate Diaz's house or something. Or oh, the Fritzels. Any weapons that you can use, uh, weapons I should say, I call them weapons. <laughs> yes, he calls them weapons because he's one of those tossers that does that all the time. <laughs> I might use that the next time I'm talking to someone and they do that. Mind you, I can't say, I am, I am one of those tossers that does that all the time too, so, yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Now this is a very dangerous weapon right here. This is where they put the receiver. Oh yeah, the receiver. Yeah, right, guys, back me up on this, right? Well, you, you, no, not, not really back me up, but how many of you have been in a cafe or restaurant or somewhere, some like eatery, where they have one of those? Have you ever just touched one of those? They are so sharp, like literally. The tip of an, like a professional kitchen knife or a dart, you know, that you play darts with. I don't mean like any dart, like a dart that you play darts with. Um, yeah, or a knitting needle or a bobby pin. Sharp, but them, it's like, I don't know what, it, they are so sharp. Right? I mean, I don't understand why. It, it's just something that you put... Paper over. I mean, if you use enough force, you could put receipts on on like a, a piece of metal like that. If it was flat, if you just you know if you use enough force, I don't understand why they're so sharp. But yeah, wow, they they are razor sharp. This now this is a very dangerous weapon right here. This is where they put the receipts on. No, the waiters? Yeah, I don't need to tell you what you can do with this thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, don't tempt to... Wait, is that part of his video? Or the show's video? <laughs> but yeah, you could really do some damage with one of those. Like, literally, you... Oof. I, I don't even want to think about it. Use that on somebody in the right place, they're done for. This is a big one. Crush it in the face, throw at him, and attack right away, come in. What? I don't get that. Again, explain, please. It's a great weapon. And of course, with everything said, we have the bar stool. This, later on, is going to be very effective, especially if somebody is pulling a knife. Now, you can hold him. <laughs> if you tear him alive. And what this guy's making everything into a weapon. This guy could, you know, visit my house, go into my bathroom, and make a weapon out of the fucking bottle of Pantene. <laughs> bottle of links. You could use this as a weapon against your attacker. Just pour out the soap into his eyes, it'll sting, and he won't be able to do anything for five minutes while he's crying in pain. What about the kick in the groin? Everybody underestimates the that kick is a genuine. 
Everybody, I have a feeling apart from that. That is, that is a genuine uh, self-defense technique. They teach that to women in women's self-defense classes. They say, you know, if a man's attacking you, whenever you get the opportunity, so basically, whenever the man has his legs open wide enough, kick him in the balls. It, I, 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 can, I totally understand why. It is guaranteed to subdue a man every time you do it. Honestly, I mean, you know, you women, when we talk about the pain of getting hit in the balls and you always come back with the argument yeah I bet it doesn't hurt as much as giving birth though actually it's been proven by scientists that it is in fact it's more painful by a significant margin there's um like a a unit of measurement that measures pain I can't remember what it's called but giving birth like the most painful point of Giving birth is at like 20,000 of these measurements. And getting kicked in the balls is like a million or something. So, I mean, you might want to verify that yourself. Because it is something that's on Facebook like 10 years ago. <laughs> it might not be true. But, you know, it had the name of the scientist and it looked real. So, but yeah, it hurts. Like, big time. Especially... I don't know why you'd need to defend yourself against a child, but for me, playing football as a kid, if I got hit in the balls, it hurt more when I was a kid than it did when I was like a teenager or an adult. Don't know why. Maybe because as a kid, your, pain, your threshold for pain's a bit lower. You know, you, you haven't man, manned up yet. You're still a bit of a pussy, and I suppose that's why. But yeah, painful. From bars. <laughs> that's the main. And what about the kick in the groin? Everybody underestimates the kick in the groin. Everybody, I have a feeling apart from Baz. <laughs> so for those of you wondering how to perform this tricky maneuver, <laughs> genius. <laughs> and it's not just emasculating people, he can also brain them too. Now, I was standing like this and talking to the guy, and suddenly, boom, a headbutt. Bang, follow up with a headbutt. Boom, knee to the head. And looky, look what we got here. Looky, Smack looky. Face. See, <laughs> everything's a weapon to this guy. That's the last time that waiter forgets the garlic bread. Yeah, yeah. But what if, heaven forbid, someone has the audacity to suggest you're sitting in his seat? Right away you say, okay, I'm sorry. Bang! Nothing's in the right place anymore. <laughs> okay. You did that okay? It's fine, yep, we're just watching. You carry on. <laughs> we can do fun games. We can actually whip throw him to the side. He goes to the ground. We choke him out. And then once he's choked out, we <laughs> can do games like. Pull the pants down and hide the spice bottle. <laughs> it's a fun thing to do. And I don't, I don't get a lot of no! So there's one other tip. If you do go to Baz's bar, wipe the bottle before you use the Tabasco. Yeah! <laughs> Our next specialist skill, few, if any, will have had much experience of. See if you can possibly guess what it is from the opening sequence. Nude cigar smoking, that age old classic. Why is there a self help video for that? Like, what, there's a hierarchy to this skill? Literally, you just take your clothes off and lit a, light a cigar and off you go. What? It, yeah, alright, whatever. And of course, in the version of this, this has video, to be a joke. In Thailand, the smoke rings are even more impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Kathy St. George. I'm here with Shira DeLand and Heather Austin. And together we're going to teach you everything you need to know about the world of cigars. So that's Kathy St. George, Shira DeLan, and Heather Austin. Names about as real as their breasts. <laughs> as you'll see, Heather has apparently made the leap into presenting from her previous career as a ventriloquist. Wow. Historically, cigars were considered... <laughs> no! Cigars were only available to kings, politicians... Historically, cigars are smoked by rich people and blah, 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 blah. 
and other members of high society. Freak! Uh, you'll have noticed it's an educational video, uh, but when discussing cigars, the girls cleverly manage to mix information with a sparkling line in repartee. Cigars are measured in two ways. <laughs> Inches are used to determine the length of the cigar, and the other measurement is called the ring, which is the diameter of the cigar. Your choice of these measurements greatly influences the overall taste and enjoyment. Well, length and diameter always have an effect on me. <laughs> I bet they do. Thank you, too. You can do anything you like with them, as long as it's not another video. <laughs> so, who exactly is this aimed at? Well, in case you had any doubts at all, uh, the next scene says it all. This can't be serious. I'm not disputing that it's real. <laughs> it can't be safe to have a naked flame near that much silicon. No. True. They are juicy though. A bushfire! A bushfire! <laughs> Destruction of the Amazon rainforest. <laughs> Naked women, cigar smoking and saxophone playing. Bill Clinton would think he'd died and gone to heaven. <laughs> I can't laugh at that. I'll never laugh at anything about including him ever again. Fucking dirty, disgusting nonce. Like, literally... Or if someone would do an Epstein on him and just... Pfft. He didn't kill himself. Now, the world of TV advertising is a specialist area every actor wants to get into. Big budgets, beautiful people, exotic locations, all of which, ironically, are absent from this. Our host, Iris breaking Anker, is an expert in breaking into television commercials. Though from the way she <coughs> talks, I think she's more likely an expert in breaking into charity shops. <laughs> Hi, I'm Iris Acker, and I'd like to share my secrets of auditioning. Now, I've been in theatre all my life, but with the advent of marriage and children, touring became inconvenient. That's number 17A in the washed-up old actress's excuse list. <laughs> Agent suggested I audition for commercials. Well, I thought that was a swell idea. And so I did. For one year, I auditioned. Not only did I not get a commercial, I never even got a call back. <laughs> I mean, nobody wanted to see me wow. twice. Perfect credentials, then, for hosting a video about getting into commercials. This is whatever the opposite is of hard sell. Welcome to my video about auditioning for commercials. I'm Iris Acker, and I'm crap at it. <laughs> Here's chapter one. <coughs> I love how Angus is just taking the piss out of these people. Oh, God. It's a bit like... You know, do you remember You've Been Framed? They were like home videos of people falling over or just failing, basically. It was like the, be the beginning of the fail craze, you know? This is similar, but... It's just self-help videos, but they're also ridiculous and, in a way, epic fails in themselves. And there's a presenter playing them and taking the piss out of them. So, yeah, I, I'm definitely going to like this because I used to love you being framed. You know, it was, it was hilarious. So, yeah, good What's show. What's the matter? You never heard about a blue-eyed Hungarian gypsy before? No. When the agent called me to go on this audition, she Creeper. did not say, just be yourself. What she did say, though, was, be funny. I guess I was. I made them laugh. Yes, she did. <laughs> Particularly as the script called for a blonde Swedish air hostess. <laughs> so how do you get an audition in the first place? Well, a photograph, apparently, is key. This is Karen. The reason I'm showing you, Karen, is she has a lot of looks. Yes, yeah, she's a very attractive lady with a very nice smile and eyes, but she's a fabulous actress, and she does comedy. Okay, you've seen Karen? This is Karen, too. Does it not spell I am funny? And there she is again, even funnier. What? Yes, let's just have a look at this again. Straight, 
Funny. Even funnier. Even funnier. No, don't see it myself. <laughs> when you go to register with an agent, ask that agent what their policy is. How often should I call you? Sometimes they'll say once a week, twice a week, once a month. Some of them will say, don't call me, I'll call you. And some of them will say, it's that lunatic who can't act on the phone again. <laughs> Get some postcards made and mail it. Remember me? Anything casting? Just wanted to say hello. Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, whatever you can think of. Technically, I think that's known as stalking. <laughs> so once you've mastered the costumes, got yourself an agent and had a few mug shots done, you too can end up with unforgettable roles just like this. Barbecues around here used to be just eating outdoors till Smokey Bear came along. That's Smokey Bear charcoal briquettes. The one that really smokes in that delicious outdoor barbecue taste that you can enjoy in every bite. And smoky bear charcoal starts fasting last night and any charcoal that I've ever used. Iris there, sadly upstaged by a bag of charcoal briquettes. <laughs> but if the world of TV isn't for you, there are always more traditional performing skills. The world of the circus, for example, offers some a chance to combine an interesting hobby with a budding career as a serial killer. Making it stick. Oh, my God. Is this going to be about knife throwing? Oh. <coughs> as a kid, I was obsessed with this well not obsessed but i just I, I always wish i could do it you know and i can't be i can't have been the only kid who when i was playing out went into the kitchen and got the sharpest knife i could find with you know a triangular kind of point went outside found a piece of wood or something made of wood like i don't know the fence <laughs> and tried to throw it to get it to stick in, I could never do it. Never. The closest I got was, you know, it kind of stuck in, but it was like that. So there's the there's the the wall, the piece of wood. It went in like that. <laughs> you know, I could never do it, but I so wish I could. So cool, knife throwing. Pretty impressive, huh? <laughs> It is! Uh, to be honest, hitting a barn door from two yards away isn't really that great. However... Well, unlike most kids who are content to watch movies and kind of fantasize about doing what they saw, I actually went out and tried to develop those skills and abilities. Specifically... Yeah, I think, yeah, I think I got my desire to try it from the bodyguard. Because in the, you know, the beginning of the movie, when the, the black guy's asking him if he wants the job of protecting Whitney Houston's character, he's in his garden practicing knife throwing. Pretty sure that's where I got my. That's what sparked my interest in it. Pretty certain it is. Yeah. Knife throwing. I remember if I also anything realized else. That there's a huge difference between Hollywood movies and reality, especially my little corner of reality. <laughs> in Michael's little corner of reality, he's got a full head of hair, perfect vision, and his wife hasn't left him for a crop sprayer. <laughs> So let's have a look at the great man in action, because versatility is Michael's forte. He can seriously maim people with all manner of objects. This is a tire iron, pretty common item. That's a watermelon. It's also pretty common, and it's a pretty good simulator of human flesh. Especially when there are no women around for 50 miles in either direction. <laughs> okay, that is impressive. That is impressive to me. That watermelon won't ever cheat on him again. <laughs> Let's say they're walking down the street. I've got a ballpoint pen in my hand. Well, it may seem kind of unusual, but for me it's really not, because this is one of my favorite improvised self-defense weapons. You're Held not going to... hand, it can be used with a lot of knife fighting techniques. Yeah, and but you're not going to throw that at a piece of wood and get it and It also makes it excellent... Oh, it's over. Uh... Okay, well, what can you do? Yeah. But um, that was the first clip... Um, of Help Yourself with Angus Deaton and I enjoyed it, it was funny it was entertaining and knowing that these little clips that he's commentating on and taking the piss out of just made it even funnier and even better you know, when it's real people and their uh, their clips, their videos, whatever they're making 
it, it just adds something extra to it. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. It was funny, and I just enjoyed listening to him completely ripping them, you know. It's just, I love that. I love roasting, you know. Sorry, I just heard a noise that sounded like something was burning, but I think it's, there's a, a marshmallow thing in there in a plastic wrapper, it might be that. But yeah, I like that. So, shout out to David for requesting this, and um, yeah, I think I'll continue with this, continue watching them. Work my way, work my way, work my way through the list, and uh, check out more of them. Should be good. If they're all as funny as this, then I'm in for a treat. I'd say, I'd say, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Thanks, David, for asking for this. Um, thank you for your support on the Patreon as well, and to everybody else. Really appreciate it. And um, anything I need to. Oh, yeah. Pretty soon. Maybe even tonight. Actually, I might do it tonight. I mean, it's it's not even six o'clock yet, so I've got time. There's going to be another brand new bonus sitcom starting. Now, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm just going to give you a couple of clues. This show is a show that I watched a couple of episodes of when it was new. Um... I've remembered the fact that I watched it and decided that I want to see it again. Uh, that's not really a clue, though. I mean, I could be talking about anything. The only clue I'm going to give you is Jack Whitehall is in it. And I think we need to get some Jack Whitehall content on the channel because I went through a phase back in those days where I just, you know, Jack Whitehall was the comedian that I suddenly got a bit obsessed with and started watching as much of his stuff as I could, like his stand-up shows and all that. So, yeah, I'd like to get back into that and do some of his stuff. And I'm going to be starting with this show that you'll see pretty soon. Maybe tonight. So, keep an eye out for that. I'll try and get it onto YouTube as well as the Patreon as well. Um, to those of you watching this on YouTube, don't forget that if you would like to request a specific video, st single video, then it's just... Either a one pound, one time one pound donation, or you can join the Patreon for one dollar a month. Um, and if you'd like to request a, an actual TV series, you have to be in a higher tier. Um, but if you're in the six nineteen, or is it the eight dollar a month tier? Is that no? I think it's the six nineteen a month tier or higher. You can request to have a TV series that I've already said I'm planning to do in the future. Starting, um, started immediately, because you want to see it. So you can say, oh, no, I want to see that now. You tell me that if you're in that tier, and it gets started immediately. So, yep, you can do that. <clears throat> also, don't forget to like and subscribe. And also check out the community tab, guys, because one of my uh, subscribers, Mikey, he's just started um, a YouTube channel, and he's uploading his original content, original written stories onto his channel. And he's starting from scratch, you know, he had zero subscribers a couple of days ago, but then I subscribed to his channel, I put a post on, and I think he got an extra subscriber out of that. Fast forward to today, he's now got seven subscribers, two uploaded videos, um, so it's, you know, the ball is starting to roll. So if you could please go over and just give his video a view, drop a like on it, and maybe a comment, you know, tell him how much you enjoyed it, or give him some constructive criticism or feedback, anything, you know, it, it'll help him. Um, just, yeah, yeah if, if you don't mind, try and show him some support, you know, because it's the Yorkshire Farm, it's called the Yorkshire Farm for a reason. We are a community here, we are here for each other, we've got each other's backs, that's the whole point of it, that's, all, that's what I've always wanted this to be. I don't want it to be cold and clinical, like the only connection that we have is when you comment on my video and that's it. I want us to have each other's backs and I mean I've made some great friends out of doing this you know I've got, there's the Facebook group for patrons patrons on on messenger every single day I'm in that group and we're having a chat having a laugh or we you know one of us will be saying t telling each other about something that's happened in our day that's shit and we'll you know be there trying to cheer each other up 
So, this is another thing that I want the Yorkshire fam to kind of show its, I don't know how to word it, its abilities, its benefits as kind of like a family or a friend group. So yeah, go on to show Mikey some support. It's the latest post on the community tab, so you, you, you can't miss it. And, yep, yeah, just head over to his channel. I, I watched his latest story today, and it was hilarious. It was really funny, actually. He's got a, a talent. He's got a talent for writing these little stories. They are funny. And um, I think you'll enjoy it. I mean, here's the post, you know. Three likes, uh, this is the latest post, 10 views now, it was on 7 about 2 hours ago, so that's good, got some more views, but I remember, you know, starting a new channel from scratch, this channel, when the old one got terminated, I had to start again from scratch, zero subscribers, views, anything, starting from the beginning, it is so difficult, and, you know, when you want to achieve and do well, but it takes a while for you to get reach those milestones, you do feel like it's going nowhere. I mean, even now, for me, on 1,500 subscribers and and views and whatever, I still feel like this is going nowhere. Because, you know, I've been doing this for well over a year now and only just reached 1,500 subscribers last night. Whereas you've got these boring, dumb, dim-witted Americans react reacting to UK comedy, pretending to enjoy it and understand the jokes. They get 10,000 su subscribers in a month. So... Just do what you can, you know, if you don't mind. You don't have to, but, you know, what, what have you got to lose, you know? All it takes is a click of a button to subscribe, like, and you might benefit from it by finding an extra place on YouTube to go and get some entertainment and some comedy. So, that's all I'm asking you guys to do. Um, thank you to everybody for watching, and I will see you next time. Good night.